The Gemara says in the time of Elul, Pitchuli Petach Kapticha Choshech Machad, which means open for me in your heart a small opening, a small hole the size of a needle. You know that when we blow Shofar in Elul, the bottom of the Shofar is a little hole. You blow into a small hole. And the trick is that the wider the hole is, the easier it is for you to blow the Shofar. So it really depends on the Shofar, not just on the person who's blowing it. But that hole is very small. But on top of the Shofar is the hole big or small? It's bigger, right? It's not so small anymore. And that's what Hashem is teaching us in Elul. You have to open for me just a little opening. An opening, the Torah says, the Gemara says, the opening the size of a tip of a needle. That's all I want. Just a little bit of sincerity. I just want to see that you actually are trying. I just want to see you're coming close to me. I just want to see that you are sincere. A little bit of genuinity. That's all I want. Just a little bit of growth in your life. And once you take upon that growth already, you made that small opening, then I will help you go all the way. Then the opening is going to be much greater. The Gemara says, what if I want to take a shofar? And I will turn it around. And instead of blowing it from the small part, from the small opening, I'll blow it from the bigger opening. Let's say I somehow manage to put my mouth over that piece of the shofar that's on top, and somehow I blow into it and I could make the same sound. Would I be yoked to the blowing of the shofar then? And the answer is no. Because when you come close to Hashem, you can't start off with big, you got to start off with small. Just start off with something small. Take upon yourself something small, and there's no such thing as an insignificant move. One small choice that you made in your life is already a big deal in God's eyes. And by you blowing into that shofar, you are signifying that I am making a small change. And that small change is going to allow me to open all doors. So listen to the pasuk. Pitchuli petach. Open for me your opening. Kapti What? What kind of opening? The type of opening that is the size of a needle, a pin of a needle. Why do we pick a needle? I mean, there are so many different examples that we could have been using. Why did the Gemara use an, an example that's more relatable to women than to men? The men really don't know what needles are. We don't deal with these things. We don't know how to saw. A lot of women don't know what it is either, nowadays. But uh, why did the Hashem want us to learn to do Teshuvah through a needle? Why not through something else? Maybe you should say, open for me a hole. Like, instead of saying a needle making an opening, you should say, if you go to the sand, you go to the beach, and you take your finger and you put inside your finger inside the, the, the sand, you're also making a hole. That's also a good example. You're making yourself a hole, an opening, and Hashem will open the rest of the way. That's a good example. Well, you're a Sadiqim, you don't know what the beach is, you never went there. So, <laughs> you don't know what that means to go to the beach. Baruch Hashem. Very, dealing with very holy people here. But, for those of you who don't know what the beach is, there's also something called water. That's a better example. Everyone knows what water is. If you go to water, and you go ahead, and you put your finger inside the water, now you just made a little bit of an opening. But, uh, that's also a good example, No? The Gemara says, just like if you were to take your finger and put it inside water and you made an opening, Hashem will help you open the rest. No, it says, take a needle. What's the difference between a needle and all these other examples? You know what the difference is? That when it comes to, you're right, but these, you could say other examples that are very tiny. You're right, it is tiny. The needle is very tiny. And I could use other examples that are very tiny. But for some reason, Hashem chose a needle. And I heard a beautiful explanation that goes like this. That by sand, if I would take my finger and put it into sand, I made a hole in the sand, but you know what happens after I take my finger out? The hole closes back up. You know what happens when I take my finger and put it into water? I made a hole, but you know what happens when I pull out my finger? It closes back up. Hashem says, if you want to make a change, if you want to make an opening for me, that opening has to be sincere and it has to be a commitment. It can be an opening that's just open for a second and then that's it, you're gone. One day you're with me and one day you're not. Are you in or you're not? Hashem says, if you want to make an opening, make it like a needle. Because a needle, once it pokes, it makes the hole, the hole stays. It's a small opening, but at least it's a hole that actually remains. Not like by the other openings. By the upper openings, there could be bigger openings. It could be you did a lot for Hashem. It could be you made a bigger move. But if that move is not stable, if that move is going to fall apart, in Hashem's eyes, it's better for you to make like a smaller opening, to make a smaller step closer to Him. A needle. Even if it's that tiny, but as long as that tiny move is concrete and it remains, that in Hashem's eyes is praiseworthy. That in Hashem's eyes is noble. And therefore Hashem says, don't just make a hole. Just don't, don't make it just an opening. An opening is going to open one day and close the next day. Make sure it's a concrete opening. Make sure it's an opening that's going to remain. That's what it means when it says, make for me an opening the size of an eye of a needle. We always heard these words. But now we have another understanding behind it. There's no such thing as falling out. Make halot one day, I took upon myself to make halot, and that's it. After a few weeks, I stopped. People don't take upon themselves, 
Perik Shira, and then they break out of it. Say Tehillim, you decide to take upon yourself Say Tehillim, so continue doing it until you finish, at least 40 days, whatever it is that you decide that to do, make sure it always has to be consistent, it always has to be concrete. Daf Yomi, people start learning Gemara, then they come to the Shira, they stop. They, they, anything, coming to class, Wednesday nights. You made a commitment, and you were coming, and we were coming for weeks, and all of a sudden, we got lost, we got carried away. And what happened to that commitment? And therefore that commitment has to be strong and it has to remain, it has to stay with us. I got it on camera. <laughs> Came to the wrong class, wrong day. So therefore, if you made that commitment, girls, make sure you stay loyal to that commitment. Because you know this is the right thing for me to do. This is a place of growth, this is an opportunity for me to come close to Hashem. So why am I pulling myself away from it? Why am I going towards the other direction? And so, we have to remember... Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be like uh, somebody who goes ahead and takes upon themselves the mitzvah, but then falls away from it. 